Hey there, internet friends, and welcome to round four of season two of That Ultimate Video Game List Show. I'm your host, Trevor Starkey from ThatNerdySite.com, and this is the show where each season, me and a panel of friends try to create the ultimate top 20 video game list with two main bits of criteria. Only one game per franchise, and only one game per console. Joining me on season two, we have Scott White from Irrational Passions and Dual Shockers. How you doing, Scott? Hey, not too bad. How about yourself, Trevor? Doing all right. Uh, we were talking a little bit before we started recording. Uh, we're heading to PAX here in a few days, so that's that is going to be a fun time. We, if if you are listening to this the day it goes live, we are already there. So check out um, our respective sites for uh, for whatever coverage we are putting on this weekend. Um, uh, also joining us, we have podcast aficionado and person who's very sad he's not going to PAX. Brandon Gann. How you doing, Brandon? I want to go. No, how are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's you're feeling less sad now, I'm sure, now that uh, Last of Us Part 2 will not be there. A tiny bit, but hey, you can't complain. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you guys hopefully later this year if you guys are going to the Kind of Funny Studio launch party. That's what I'm planning on. So one trip a year, and that's what I decided this year. So got to take the good with the bad. Sounds good. Sounds good. We have Jonathan Zyger Landeros from My Xbox and Me. How you doing, Zyger? I'm doing great. Also very sad I'm not going to PAX, but yeah, it's all right. Yeah, remember when, like, PAX was, like, a thing you always went to? Yeah. Then you, you, then, know, then you grew you. up and started having, like, adult costs and responsibilities and stuff. Yeah. Wah, Damn wah. those things. <laughs> and rounding out the panel, uh, Aaron Mahler from the Scootcast. How you doing, Aaron? Oh, I'm just fantastic. Also bummed. I'm not going to PAX. Yeah. Sorry, Edpo. Uh Where are you at, remind me, Aaron? Uh, where, like, where situationally in the in the states are you located? I live in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Oh, so it's not that far. Like, is it just a, a couldn't get time off work kind of thing? I am in college, and I cannot oh. afford to uh, miss class. That's fair. Stupid class. Yeah, it's, it's lame. I, I don't miss those days. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you like what you hear, please remember you can always rate, review, like, and subscribe everywhere you can. If you're feeling extra generous, you can always support That Nerdy Site on Patreon at patreon.com slash thatnerdysite. If you are brand new to the show, uh, quick rundown. This is, this is certainly a weird place to be jumping in, I will admit, uh, for four weeks into our second season. But for the uninitiated, uh, the show works like this. For these first few rounds, uh, so for the last few weeks and then the, this, this week and... Uh, probably the next week, um, we will uh, take turns coming up with games and adding them to the list. Each panelist kind of gets to go add a game to the list um, with the only two main bits of criteria, as I touched on, being one game per console and one game per franchise. So once a game is added to the list, all other games from that console or that franchise are out of the running. So, for example, last week we had Pokemon Heart Goal, uh, Gold added for the Nintendo DS, meaning no other Nintendo DS games and no other Pokemon games can be added to the list. Um, however, games can be submitted for any console that they have been released on. So uh, I think, yeah, N64 Four is still out there and available. So if somebody really wanted to put like uh, Ocarina of Time, and they were thinking about the DS version, but they want to still do Ocarina of Time on the N64, that's available uh, and out there for them. Uh, remasters can be considered, and games within collections can be considered, but the collections themselves may not be submitted as a single entry. Each panelist also has a veto that they can use when a game is submitted to keep it from being on the list. So back in week one, Scott submitted Diablo 2 as the PC game, and Aaron vetoed it, uh, wanting to potentially submit uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 as the PC uh, offering. However... As in uh, politics, even though we never see it used, uh, the rest of the panel can override a veto. Um, not by two-thirds majority here. Instead, here it is by unanimous majority, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, and Zyger and Brandon did happen to agree to keep Diablo 2 on the list. So Aaron's veto in that first week was overridden. But... Aaron, or no, sorry, Zyger, Brandon, and Scott all still have vetoes remaining if they choose to use it. Um, once we get all 20 games on the list, the show will then shift into ranking our top 25 games at a time, and the number one game will be retired into our Hall of Fame 
to join God of War from Season 1, and uh, those games will be ineligible from future seasons. So a quick recap of the last few rounds. Uh, round 1, Aaron gave us Super Mario Galaxy for the Wii. Zyger brought in Halo Reach for the Xbox One. Brandon brought Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation 1. Scott brought Diablo 2, as I already said, for the PC. Round 2, Zyger brought Kirby Air Ride on the GameCube. Brandon brought Uncharted 4 A Thief's End for the PlayStation 4. Scott gave us Metal Gear Ghost Babble for the Game Boy Color. That's That was where we all started going off the rails, really. Uh, and Aaron rounded us out on week 2 with Persona 5 for the PlayStation 3. Round 3, Brandon brought Kingdom Hearts uh, for the PlayStation 2 last week. Uh, Scott, once again, Bubble Bobble for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Aaron, as I already said, brought us Pokemon Heart Gold for the Nintendo DS. And Zyger rounded out last week with Grand Theft Auto V on the Xbox 360. So we still got um, some some big Nintendo platforms out there like Super Nintendo, the Switch, the N64 available. Um, but PlayStation is largely out of the running until unless we get into uh, handheld stuff. So round four is going to go Scott, then Aaron, then Zyger, then Brandon. So Scott, kick us off. You you teased this week on Twitter, I think, that this might be what finally gets Zyger to use his veto against you. So what are you gonna what are you gonna hit us with in round four? Okay. First and foremost, I just want to address something. This is the <laughs> All ultimate right. video game list show. Nowhere in it is it the ultimate top 20 games of all time list show. So I'm just saying, my games still count because, yeah, they might not be of the best of the best Super AAA tier. They're still awesome games. And I like to think of myself as the wild card anti-hero who's true chaotic neutral and... I'm not doing this to take a spot. I'm doing this to give exposure to games that people should play that I personally love. I'm not... And I'm saying this going into this next game because I guarantee all of you are going to be like, what the hell, Scott? What are you doing? <laughs> but Scott, I love all I'm, this qualifying. I'm, it all qualifies, and it's a great game. Even Nintendo Power, in their article, or in their reporting of this back in the day, said... They thought that this was the best side scroller since Super Mario World. Okay? Oh okay. This is a treasure of a game <laughs> by treasure. And for this week, my pick is for the N sixty four and its mischief makers. <laughs> <laughs> mischief makers mischief makers by the number one mischief maker himself scott white tell us about mischief makers scott this is a fan i and i just played replayed this this past year still holds up it's a fantastic side scrolling game where you play as it's kind of mega man ish because it's a side scrolling game and you're a robot but this time you're a robot maid named marina and she's trying to rescue her professor her creator um from an evil doctor that's kidnapped him and you don't have a gun you don't have a blaster you have dash boots like Mega Man X and you grab the people of this planet Clancer and you can shake things you sh and it's like got puzzle elements and you navigate through um, all sorts of different 2d side-scrolling worlds I think there's eight worlds that you explore with 12 levels I want to say each so some some levels are more puzzle themed others are more combat themed there's big boss battles there's kind of like these weird robot animal dudes that can eventually like combine voltron style as like a super boss and it's just it's a lot of fun and it visually it's kind of weird because all the buildings and everyone are just sad faces uh like sad face blocks and sad face little circle orb things that you have to shake and you collect uh orbs and your goal is to get to the end of each level and grab the star and you can find special gold gems in each one to kind of unlock an extended extra ending and it's just a really good game on the n64 and i still love it to the day this day it's in my top five picks of the n64 platform and yeah my pick goes to mischief makers uh, all right. In in 2009, Games Radar called it possibly the most underrated and wildly ignored game on the N64. I literally just read that too. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, we're both on the Wikipedia page. Cool. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. I think all I, of us uh, are. 
because this admittedly yeah is a game that again i like looking at it, i'm like i do not remember this at all and this is from the era where i was going to blockbuster and just getting random games every week and somehow this one never made it into my uh uh my playlist so i mean scott scott bringing bringing the mischief this does absolutely seem like uh the most fitting of games um so i got to imagine nobody else here has played this one um unless like aaron's going to completely uh, <laughs> uh blow me away <laughs> I'm gonna be really honest with you. Yeah, I have played this game. <laughs> you you have oh you have oh, man. I have, you have played Mischief Makers. I okay. I didn't. Scott just unlocked a memory in my brain that I haven't remembered in a long time. But I'm looking at the gameplay here, and I absolutely had this because we had bought some box of just like N64 games at a garage sale, and this was in there. And yeah, this game's dope. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even I'm not even a big like side scrolling fan, so I don't think I have as much love for it as Scott does. But uh, I remember I remember having a really great time with this game, so I'm all for it. Uh, I mean, all right. Um, so uh, I can't imagine there are other games in the Mischief Maker franchise. No, are there, Scott? The, nope. This, this is the this only is the Mischief Maker game. One. So we're not at risk at like leaving any of those gems <laughs> out of the list. Oh my god. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about Dude, other I detect, N64... I detect some sass in your voice there, Trevor. Oh, I'm not hiding it. <laughs> so, yeah, it is it's it is very apparently there. Uh, so let's talk about other N64 games that uh, that this will pull off the list. Anybody want to give any, uh, any shouts to the N64 era? Um, remembering that, of course, something like Mario 64 is already out of the running uh, with Mario Galaxy on the Wii. Uh, but you have, you know... The notable stuff like Ocarina of Time, um, which is on and, the 3DS, and a, hand, and a bevy of other um, uh, potential offerings. So, anybody want to? Uh, and again, I recognize that I'm talking to a, a younger panel um, that might not have as much N64 love. So, um, Zyger, do you have anything you'd want to give a little love or shout out to? Uh, a couple of things actually. Hey, you Pikachu, great game. Not on this list at all, but Hey, you Pikachu, great game. Yeah, Pokemon Stadiums one and two, Space Station Silicon Valley by Rockstar, uh, the Mario Party franchise. I just have a quick question for Scott though. Shoot, S- Scott, you said this was one of the five games for the N sixty four you were thinking of. What were the other four no. games? No, the, the I, all I said was this is one of my favorite games on the N sixty four. This wasn't one of my five picks. Like this has from the beginning been my pick for the N sixty four. Gotcha. Okay, I just wanted. It, to, I, yeah. I thought you had said. One of five. I was like, what other four games on the N64 do I not know about? (laughs) Well, uh, he, yeah, Scott said something to the effect of, like, one of his top five N64 games, I think. Yes. Gotcha. Um, So, yeah, I I would be curious if if this was always, obviously, your N64 pick. What were the other, what are your uh, your other notable N64 titles, Scott? Uh, I loved, like, Mario 64. Mario Kart is my favorite. Mario Kart, uh, Star Fox 64, Ocarina of Time, this... Um, I loved, um, Hybrid Heaven was a pretty good RPG. I really enjoyed that one. Um, Smash Brothers, of course, so. Okay. Yeah, I want to, I'll give a little love to, uh, to, in, in the, in the style of Scott, to some of the more obscure titles that I remember and, and look fondly back on from the N64, uh, Snowboard Kids, um, both Snowboard Kids 1 and 2, uh, you have Beetle Adventure Racing, uh, where it was just the racing game, but with Volkswagen Beetles. Um, yeah, uh, like I remember playing those a ton with family, uh, but certainly you have uh, the iconic stuff like GoldenEye, Perfect Dark. Um, I mean, like, this was what, like the Banjo era, mm. uh, even though I never really played those. Um, Diddy Kong Racing is another solid entry from the N64 that doesn't often get a lot of love. Chameleon Doom 64. What was that, uh, Brandon? Doom 64. Doom 64, yeah. Um, yeah, like, I I remember just kind of that era of, like, playing every sort of random split-screen four-player games uh, with, uh, with uh, my handful of friends uh, in that, like, middle school, high school era. Um uh, like Goldeneye, South Park, um, Doom 64, 
Uh, I think there was like Duke Nukem. We probably played some version of on there. Um, yeah, just like ton of fun with those kinds of the games and and all the racers that I've kind of already touched on. Oh, um, also Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, yeah, it's, I'd mentioned banjo. Um, oh, sorry, I, I, I never, we, I, I never played the banjo games. Um, uh, I also put a ton of time into Harvest Moon sixty four, um, mm, and probably like, I remember nothing about it. I'm sure, but I, I like I, I except the box or the uh, the art for Quest sixty four, which is like just the. Like I think back on it now, and it's it's just it just seems like the most blandest like RPG <laughs> possible. But uh, but I I vaguely remember that. Um, I'm trying to think what else if uh, anything. Uh, the best the best N sixty four game Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. Nobody's talked about yeah. that yet. That shit was dumb. Yeah, that was a solid solid pick. Uh, and that's pretty yeah. It's probably where I was playing like Rogue Squadron and uh, Episode One Racer. Um. So, yeah, it was a good era for like racing games, but mischief maker, huh? Yep. Mischief makers. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, any any other N sixty four love we want to throw out there, or I will throw it to to Zyger or Brandon if you guys want to throw a veto out there, or if mischief makers gets added to the list as our N sixty four game of choice. Look, I never heard Mischief Makers before Scott actually said the title, so uh, I, I'm yeah. all for it happening. And again, I'm never going to veto. Stop trying. But um, yeah, uh, uh, the N64 is kind of like a bit of a sore spot for me because I had the promise of having one ripped out from underneath me, so I never actually got to play and own my own N64. So Mischief Makers, let's get it on the list. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Zyger? I really want to veto this, but the fact that Aaron's played it and says that it's a good game yeah. makes me hesitant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's fair. Um, all right, well, yeah, M- Mischief Makers, I guess, goes on to the list. Uh, once again, Scott just bringing bringing the fire. <laughs> um, I have a definitely. Yeah, Aaron agrees ahead. that it's a good game, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, you you have an ally on this one, so yeah. so. Um, if this I imagine will not end up at like number twenty um, <laughs> when we actually start ranking this. There can only um, be one number twenty. That's that's what I'm taking solace in. There, there is, bubble yeah. Bubble. And at, yeah, at this point, it's probably going to be bubble bubble. I think, uh, just given that nobody else has has played it. Um, but we will see. Yeah. Um, bubble bubble or, or Metal Gear Ghost Babble. Uh, you definitely seem to be gunning for the the obscure. Nobody else has has touched uh, games there, Scott. So uh, I I applaud the moxie that you bring to the list. Uh, all right, uh, let's uh, kick it over then to Aaron for pick number two. What do you have, Aaron? What do you bring I to the table? I am going to take off the board a console that I thought was going to be taken episode one, uh, which is the Switch. Mm-hmm. And you might go, Aaron, are you going to go with Breath of the Wild? Are you going to go with Smash Brothers? Are you going to go with any of those other, Super Mario Odyssey? And I say, no. I'm going to go with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Because that's yeah! the best, oh, it's the best okay. game on the Switch. Xenoblade Chronicles 2. <laughs> All right. Tell tell us about... Because uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, that's, that's a series that I just always see and have never touched. Um... But I, I love already that like you and and Scott have this weird alliance on this season of a mix of like the obscure games and then the the RPGs like this one. So tell us about uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Two. Xenoblade Chronicles Two is a I'd call it like a semi open world RPG. I don't know if I'd go full open world, but uh, it's. Um, just so it's just so good you play as this guy named rex and he's like a he's a what's it called in the game he's not a minor diver thank you he's a diver and then you get these things called blades which are your companions but they're also your weapons um and it's just i know a lot of people it was pretty split on if people liked the combat or not i remember that when the game came out i love the combat it's this weird like you auto attack But uh, it's almost kind of rhythmic in timings where you have to hit for, like, special abilities. So you're not sitting there mashing any button to, like, actively hit people. You're just, like, trying to um, activate your abilities at the right time. 
Uh, the music is amazing. I listen to the soundtrack constantly. Um, the worlds are like so much better than like I thought the Switch could make. Like it looks so good on the Switch. It's just crazy. Um, and the story is uh, absolutely bonkers, but I love it so, so much. And I don't want to say anything because you should play it, but the story is absolutely insane. All right. Uh, uh, Scott, I will throw it over to you because uh, I imagine you have stuff to add as well. Oh, man. Aaron, my friend. I love this. <laughs> I love this pick. I actually finally got around to beating Xenoblade Chronicles 2 uh, about two and a half weeks ago. So the ending is super fresh in my mind, and I completely agree with you. It's bonkers. And how it connects to Xenoblade Chronicles 1 is even more bonkers. <laughs> it's so Yeah. So it's so good. I even actually over on Dual Shockers we did a uh, our video game Valentine a couple weeks ago for Valentine's and the Aegis was my video game Valentine pick. Uh, oh. So like Pyra and stuff. So absolutely love this game. Give it a try. It's so good. And have, have you featured it on uh, RPGU yet? We have not. We have not. All right, sounds like sounds like so, you yeah. need to get Aaron over to uh, to talk about that game on RPG University. Yeah, over to Rational Passions. Oh my God! Please. Hey, want to uh, gush about Pyra and Rex a- and everyone? Absolutely, I do. Cool. Nice. I'll I'll hit you up later. But yes, hundred percent behind this pick. Absolutely love it that it got picked, and it's better than Breath of the Wild. There, I said it. I mean. You you will get no argument from me on games being better than Breath of the Wild. Okay, uh, wow. I, okay. I, I notoriously am not a fan of that one. Listen, so. I only didn't. Breaking. I only didn't pick Breath of the Wild because there's a chance I can steal it next episode on the Wii U. All right. No. <laughs> there's a that's, chance. That's fair, and that's that is admittedly where I played it was on the Wii U because I played it, picked it up before I grabbed a Switch. Um, but yeah, that, I. Uh, that game um it's a it's a fine game uh i like i don't hate breath of the wild it's just not the like life changing experience that so many people had for me so uh uh zyger how about you uh, xenoblade chronicles seems like something you would play but i don't know for sure it is absolutely something i have played yeah. i never okay. beat it but i want to know i like i don't even know how far i got into it like first 20 hours of maybe just the tutorial but as far as like xenoblade goes i enjoy the characters and the story of the first one so much more that i actually went through and i'm pretty sure finished it what makes xenoblade chronicles 2 in your opinion better than the original um i i prefer the combat and the gameplay mechanics of two way more than in one and it's also been a so long time since I've played Xenoblade 1 that I'm like super excited to play it on the Switch when it comes out this year. So maybe my opinion will be changed when that comes out. Um but yeah, it's just like the combat in I loved the like it the combat in Xenoblade 2 kind of like it's a very good like trance game cuz you're sitting there and you've got a it's very tactical cuz I don't have to worry about like mashing buttons or you know sitting there like just hacking away at enemies. It's kind of like okay, I'm I'm hitting them and I'm always hitting them for damage, but I see that my other teams need healing, so I got to use my healing skill. And then I'm just worried about skills the whole time, which I pr- I loved that tactical element of it that it kind of brought into the whole game. Okay, gotcha. So like again, I enjoyed what I did play of Zelda Chronicles Two. Never finished it, and when you said you were gonna take the Switch, I was so prepared to veto you yeah. because I was. I was going to put Smash Ultimate on. Yeah. But honestly, Zelda Blade Chronicles 2, great game. I'm going to let this one slide. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, Brandon, how about you? Uh, do you have anything to add or any thoughts on Xenoblade? I can't. I do not own a Switch. The that Most Nintendo platforms, they don't have enough like that I can only get exclusively on their platforms enough that interest me personally. So Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is not a game I have any first-hand knowledge of of any kind and since i'm not leaning one way or the other i just have to pretty much pass yeah no that's fair this and it's that's kind of where i fall on this one myself is like i remember seeing xenoblade chronicles 2 on in like switch directs and stuff for a long time because this was this was one that like this was like the this was like one of the first ones that got delayed right yeah one of the first 
like the rare Switch game that got delayed in that first year or so? It was. Um, um I don't know if it, it got was delayed. Still I, out the first year. It was out the holiday. Like, I don't. I don't December even know if it got delayed i think it just they took forever to tell you a release date so people were all worried uh, about okay. it but it was one of the first and, games to get announced like it was in that january 3rd like hey this is the switch you, thing you know yeah yeah okay and that it, yeah it might it might not have actually been delayed it might have still come out and it was just like the end of that year yeah um yeah that might be what it was um but yeah i just remember like i remember seeing it and being like oh that looks cool but that also looks like just too out there for what I'm looking for right now. So, uh, so, uh, and, and, and having no like prior experience with the series, um, did not jump in myself. Um, but I mean, your, your enjoyment and passion for it and, and, uh, echoed by Scott and Zeiger, I might, uh, sit down, pick it up here. Not, uh, you know, while I'm waiting for the glut of other good big games that we've got coming this year. Um, any other Switch games we want to shout out and give some love to? Zyger, you already mentioned Smash Ultimate, um, which uh, I would argue, yeah, is the probably at this point the definitive Smash. Um, yep. Even though I'm not in the like competitive scene at all, um, or even <laughs> even in the non-competitive, I like I think I played a grand total of zero online matches in that game. Uh, <laughs> played played through the uh, the whole like single player stuff and oh, that's uh, so good. and like all the character classic mode things um but yeah i don't think i played a single multiplayer um against anybody other than cpu component opponents um but yeah that's that is that is the the uh the smash bros game um i mean i'll i'll it 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 may come up again uh as um as you alluded to aaron but uh does anybody want to throw out their love for breath of the wild Nope. Okay. Cool. Ouch. Um, <laughs> oh, that would be a good game. Not what I would pick, though. All right. Um, I know I picked Xenoblade, what? but like that hurt my heart right there. <laughs> um, any uh, any other notable like uh, we haven't had Fire Emblem on the list anywhere. I was gonna say uh, shut Fire up. Fire Emblem. Yeah, Fire Emblem Three Houses was my game of the year last year, personally. So same. Um, uh, really, really enjoyed that. Um, as somebody who's very often kind of hit or miss on the Fire Emblem series, um, trying to think what else is on my Switch that <laughs> that isn't getting a lot of shout uh, out to Octopath. Uh, Scott, yeah, Octopath you, was was great. You beat me by like two seconds. <laughs> there, there you go. Um, I, I will throw it to you, Aaron, since this is probably the last thing that could have been uh, gotten some Divinity Original Sin to love, and I promised you back in episode one that we'd give yeah. you a chance to uh, I'll, to to shower some love on that game. Uh, yeah, Divinity Original Sin is just an amazing an amazing amalgamation of the CRP genre, and it's damn near perfect. And I could go on about it for like an hour, so I won't here. But uh, it's just like if you could play Dungeons and Dragons in a video game, it's Divinity Original Sin 2. That's my pitch. Yeah, I've, I hopped in for like the first hour or so. And actually, I don't even remember if it was uh, one or two that I, that I played. Um, but I, I picked up like both of them at some point because uh, I thought um, it, they seemed like, oh, those are games that I would really like to get into. And I just couldn't find myself uh, investing in the time commitment that I knew they would require of me. So, um, but I, I hear nothing but good things about them. So shout out to divinity, original sin one and two indeed. Um, anything else we want to love about the switch? Um, I'm going to shout out preemptively bravely default Two. Um, it's going to be <laughs> a fantastic right. game. And I, uh, if we could yeah. pick games that aren't out yet, that would have been my pick. So. Yeah, I, I mean, we we still got the 3ds. Um, uh, so you got Bravely Default one, and then Bra- Bravely Second, which because Square Enix was gonna Square Enix with their naming. Um, so yeah, I, I like I remember seeing the the Bravely Default two um, like announcement being like, wait, didn't we already get a Bravely Default two? Uh, the Final right. Fantasy thing. It was it was called Bravely Second, and so this one is. Yeah, that's just gonna really confuse people, I'm sure. But Square Enix gonna Square Enix, mm-hmm. uh, and Square Enix gonna Square Enix combined with Nintendo gonna Nintendo, and you get Bravely Default Two. 
uh, the sequel to Bravely Second, the sequel to Bravely Default. No, it's not connected uh, at all. Oh, it's, it's not? No, yeah, Default they're, they're 2 doing is the Final like, Fantasy thing. Yeah, yep. Okay. I'm looking oh, okay. for Bravely Second 2. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Which will be a direct con- continuation of Bravely <laughs> Default 2, so it's going to be Bravely Second 2. Or maybe they'll or do Bravely 3rd. You never know. Yeah, I was going to say, or it'll be Bravely 3rd. Or we'll get Bravely Default 2nd. 2. 2. <laughs> two. <laughs> yeah, yes. Remix. Uh, yeah hd remaster uh okay uh well that is uh that is gonna put xenoblade chronicles 2 on the list for the nintendo switch um so yeah now we are completely out of the the modern realm of stuff uh i suppose yeah um save i guess the vita um and sort of the wii u uh so zyger i will throw it to you what are you gonna bring for your round four pick here Originally, I was going to do Mario Party 2 on the N64. Then, I was going to do Smash Ultimate on the Switch. However, <laughs> both those consoles got picked. <laughs> this, this, is a, this is a tough round for you, yeah. Right? So, I'm going to do Super Smash Bros. for Wii U on the Wii U. Okay. So, All right. Uh, so, tell us about uh, that as the the Wii U choice. So, I know people are... Aaron mostly was wanting to put Breath of the Wild on the list on Wii U. However, Super Smash for Wii U is definitively the best game on the Wii U. There are other great games like uh, Mario 3D World, Splatoon, uh, well, Xenoblade X, right? That It was that spinoff one. Mm-hmm. Like, there were a lot of different titles for Wii U, and uh, Bayonetta 2, so good. But Smash for Wii U was like the combination of everything that Nintendo was doing at the time put into one game uh they also of course made like a 3ds version but smash for wii u is like hey let's take everything great about smash and like really bring it up smash for wii u set the stage for what would eventually become smash ultimate which we all can agree is the best smash in the series but switch is already taken so we can't put ultimate on the list but wii u did everything like that Smash Ultimate does just on a lesser extent because it was trying to differentiate itself from both Brawl and um, Melee. As far as like the competitive scene, Melee for years has been the Smash game forever. Like it was always at Evo, but then Smash for Wii U came and the Smash community all agreed like, hey, this game actually really good. And when Evo, what, 2016? 16, 2017 came around, they had both Smash for Wii U and Smash Melee. It's like, yeah, this game is the proper successor. Brawl, people were iffy on, but Smash for Wii U, great game. It brought back so many characters. We got Mewtwo back, we got Roy back, we had a bunch of guest characters, Bayonetta, uh, Cloud was originally announced for Wii U, which yeah, blew everyone's that, mind. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah. Especially because, like, like, I remember... I, I remember for Trevor Trove writing up a thing um, cuz initially I was just like super incredulous I was like Cloud has never been in a Nintendo game and then like doing the research I was like okay theater rhythm he was in theater rhythm and that was and it. Kingdom Hearts <laughs> and nope. and uh, but Kingdom Hearts uh, oh I guess yeah Kingdom recoded Hearts. which is Ch- the one uh, we don't Chain talk of, about uh, well was he in Chain of Memories as like that would have been character, Nintendo yes. Yeah, that oh, would have wow. been the that would have been the the other Nintendo game that he was in was would have been Kingdom Hearts: Chain of Memories. Wasn't he uh, in a tactics game? Uh, in Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah, but like the yeah, DS but one. Yeah, but uh, not on the DS one. No, he was oh, only okay. in the uh, in the PSP version. Gotcha. But yeah, uh, or like... the, the original PlayStation version, and then the PSP PS Vita ver- uh, PSP version. Yeah, um, yeah. So he like Cloud had famously like barely been on Nintendo. Um, uh, and especially since he wasn't in uh, PlayStation All Stars, that was the other right? like, like oh, that's a Nintendo paid a lot of money to get Cloud into Super Smash Brothers for the Wii, uh, the Wii U, and like for Smash when they did all of those trailers announcing all of those characters, it was always a like get hype moment. Like everyone stopped what they were doing on the internet to pay attention to what new character would be announced in Smash, even if they didn't play Smash at all. They just wanted to see what the excitement was about. And, like, there was something for everyone. And it's just a great game. And they added so many different modes to the game. 
Yeah, I mean, that was definitely the the generation where, like, we'd gotten teases of third-party characters hopping in in Smash in the past with, uh, like, Sonic and Snake. But the fact that they got Cloud and they got Ryu and uh, and so many other, like, like I remember that's, that is the era we started getting those, like, how is this even a video game? And it was, like, ten or eight characters that, like, um, had very little in the way of, like, a Nintendo lineage starting to show up, so... Uh, yeah, as we've as we've touched on Smash Ultimate, kind of continued that on with the like everyone is here mentality, and has continued on by bringing in you know banjo and stuff like that, but um, and Joker, uh, but uh, yeah, the Wii U um, certainly uh, you know a worthy pick doesn't have ice climbers. Um, it does not. You know, gotta gotta shout that out. Um, it's got a boy who, Roy though. He's back. Sure. Roy's yep. our boy. Um, so, uh, so it, and, and given that ultimate is out of the running, um, this certainly seems like the most appropriate of the smash games to, uh, to continue, uh, on, onto the list. Um, any other Wii U games that we want to give love to? I'm, I'm actually surprised knowing, knowing your love of Splatoon that you didn't like that. Like if you were a little bit more chaotic neutral as Scott is, it seems like Splatoon would have been your choice for the Wii U, but I was thinking about it. I don't think anyone are. I can't. I guess I can't assume, but I don't think many people on the panel have played Splatoon enough to like really back it. I feel like Smash is honestly a better game. There you go. That's. I mean, I I played Splatoon, um, but the tutorial of it like forces the Wii U gamepad like motion control uh, setting, and I was like, this is not how I want to play this game at all. And so I didn't even get far enough to like be able to change that around so i was like well this i'm i'm not gonna be the competitive multi-shooter multiplayer shooter anyway so splatoon was not something i was gonna stick with um uh aaron i will throw to you to give some love to the the legend of zelda breath of the wild since you don't have a veto that you could use I can't. To, uh, to keep this off the list anyway i can't uh breath of the wild is just it's just so good and I know that's not a real argument, but it is. Um, <laughs> it's just so good. I just, I found myself lost in Breath of the Wild a lot. And in, like, the best way possible. Um, it's just a world that, like, in in the, way, in the way that, like, I'll go back to Spider-Man just to, like, swing around New York. And I'll go back to, uh, like, GTA just to drive around. I'll go in Breath of the Wild just to, like, run around and, like, do stuff. Like, not for any real purpose. Um, and I think that kind of marks it as a really great game that I want to play it without even actually having to do anything. Yeah. Uh, a, a world you can get lost in and, and enjoy aimlessly. Yeah. Um, certainly that, I mean, that, that is the, you know, cornerstone of a good open world game. Um, so I can appreciate that even if I did not share the sentiment myself. Um, I appreciate that a lot of people really did. Uh, enjoy that um uh i'll shout out mario kart 8 since both that and the deluxe version um for the uh switch are going to be out of the running here um yeah that's i mean obviously there wasn't too much on the wii u which is why the wii u super mario <laughs> was 3D the wii land. u yeah super mario? mario 3d 3 3d world 3, oh, 3D right, land right. would have been the 3ds um uh yeah that's i mean that that also gave us Super Mario Maker, um, our I want to say our yeah our Wii U pick for season one was Legend of Zelda: The Wind Waker, uh, Suck It Cameron, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is the best Zelda. I mean it's it's certainly it is certainly up there. Uh, my personal pick still goes towards uh, Link to the Past, but um, and I tried to get Link to the Past on last time around, but I think that got vetoed. Yeah. Um, yeah, because Wind Waker was on the list, so um, uh, curses. Um, yeah, this also I mean, eliminates Metroid. Just saying. Yeah, Metroid's pretty much uh, out of it at this point. No, there's a uh, Metroid on the 3DS. There's a, yeah, the I mean, yeah, there, the there, it's, it's there. It's not. Yeah, it's not entirely <laughs> out of the running, but um, I mean, also, I, I don't think that was going to be the 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 Wii U pick anyway. But uh, yeah, I mean, rest in peace, Wii U. Uh, this, this eliminates all of the Just Dance games <laughs> Damn. that that we're still getting uh, released on there. Um, Captain Toad, 
uh you know oh also oh my god captain toad's good, so good good uh good like plat or pu- platform puzzler um yeah uh cool that's uh super smash brothers for the wii u uh, i mean i'll throw it to uh to scott uh if you want to well i guess it's it, like i guess we didn't talk about who else wants to like gush about super smash bros um scott uh, are you on the super smash bros camp oh yeah absolutely love yeah. it but with with ultimate now it's like yeah i mean wii u was a great stepping stone for ultimate so yeah um the, the wii u crashed and burned so that smash ultimate could live <laughs> yeah right so the switch could rise from its ashes like a phoenix you know but yeah absolutely great game there really aren't any other games that i would have probably gone for on wii u um anybody uh play pocket tournament <laughs> i did that game I, was I amazing have it. i have it <laughs> I even have the special Pokken controller they made for it. That was more of like a traditional fighting game controller. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, it was fun. I never really invested too much time into it, but it was it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, I will also shout out real quick because uh, it is a series that is near and dear to me and like still lives behind me very much uh lego dimensions um oh my god was, was certainly a multi-platform thing but uh but that was uh, i have i have every set from the first season um and i think most of se- the second season at this point because i think i like when when they basically discontinued the game i'm pretty sure i went through and like nabbed up all of the the second season stuff on clearance for like you know, a dollar a pack or something like that. Uh, and I just never went back into the game and built them. Yeah, uh, I remember sure I still season, them all. <laughs> I think, three, a giveaway and got, like, a bunch of sets for that. I was like, oh, this is great. And then, like, a month later, they more or less discontinued the game. Yeah, it would have been season two because they never made it to season three. Okay. Yeah, whatever the yeah. Harry Potter stuff was, that's the giveaway yeah. stuff I won. Yeah, nice. Um, shout out to, the, uh, uh, shout out to yeah. Tokyo Mirage Sessions. I know that just came out go, on the yeah. Switch again, but also Wii U, good game. Yeah, that was that was one of the last like Wii U games that hadn't been ported over, um, and but now it is on the Switch uh, for a a second life over there, um, and it's still it's it's on my Switch. I that's probably the game I'm going to actually like sit down and play on the flight to Boston because it's just been sitting there and I haven't touched it. Um, so dive into that, give that a little bit of time uh, as as I travel out to PAX this week. Uh, any last love for the Wii U before we uh, move on? Or, you know, uh, of course, I th- I can throw it out there. Anybody want a veto? No, no veto. All, All right. right. <laughs> then uh, then we will move on. And I, I could, uh, I, Brandon, you didn't have a Wii U, so I didn't bother throwing it to you. But Brandon uh, gets to round out this week um, with, uh, with his pick. And you mentioned, Brandon, last week that um, with uh, with Kingdom Hearts for PS2, that was probably the last console you'd be able to speak kind of uh, definitively from experience on. Um, uh, so, what are you going to bring to the table here for uh, for your round four pick? Um, as a quick brief reminder, um, as games have been added and consoles have been taken off, I've been pulling from my own top 100 list. And before nominating and letting you know what my fourth pick is, I'm looking at five games remaining on my personal list. Of oh, those wow. five, there's only one that is on multiple consoles. So, and even though it's at the top of my list of my favorite remaining games that are still eligible, I'm going to skip it just in case, kind of as a <laughs> risky just play. Just in case you need a round, it, a round, a round five pick. <laughs> exactly, it's a risky play uh, because, with that being said, the next two systems are probably going to be taken off <laughs> at the first two picks of the final uh, adding episode next week. But for this week, for this pick, I'm actually going to uh, pick a game. That let's just say we've gotten close with Mario Galaxy on the Wii, we've gotten close with Heart Gold on the DS, but this is going to be oh, the no. first time we're going to have a repeat from season one for the original <laughs> Xbox no. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic on the the original Xbox. All right, uh, I'm curious if this will get Zyger to use his veto because his mission was trying to keep the the list pure. I already um, have an Xbox uh, theme and, in mind. And, Brand, brand new so uh so tell us about star wars knights of the old republic for the original xbox sure uh, i never owned an og xbox and so i never 
played Knights of the Old Republic until about a couple of years ago, thanks to the Xbox One's backwards compatibility. I've always heard KOTOR being the definitive, mostly the definitive, uh, Star Wars game in existence. And so when I when they finally brought the OG uh, backwards compatible over to the Xbox One, I grabbed it and played it, and I was absolutely floored by how well it still holds up today. Uh, granted, when you're playing an updated version uh, on the backwards compatibility, even though I did play on an OG Xbox disc, the game ran fantastically. Uh, the graphics still hold up, in my personal opinion. The story in of itself gets lauded about time and time again, especially the twist, which is on uh, Final Fantasy VII levels of twists and video games uh, history, but uh, even though I knew that twist heading in, it did not impact my enjoyment of the game at all. In fact, it actually heightened it because I knew it was coming. I felt like the RPG mechanics Bioware did with KOTOR's combat were really fun. It allowed me to get really uh, deep into the systems, how to uh, customize how I wanted to make uh, my character. I always tried to go with the uh, a dual wield uh, saber format, and before you get the lightsaber, I tried to go dual winning blades. Uh, having the ability to really get, if I wanted to, to get really uh, detailed into how I wanted to customize my party members, which party members I wanted to take and which to leave on the ship. Uh, getting to fly around to several of the planets and uh, complete quests, recruiting new crew members. And I really felt like the last quarter, last fifth of that game was like just really hit on a high note, uh, not only because of locations, but story plot points and some of the great moments that happen in KOTOR. Uh, it really adapts well uh, to RPGs just as a whole. It's very easy to understand, very easy to know uh, where where to go, what to do. There are some quests that are kind of a little bit uh, of a, for lack of a better term, blood vessel, like strengthening, or it's like, ah, uh, where do I, have, uh, what do I do for you? But uh, it's very easy to know, you know, if you want to go as evil as you want or be as uh, goody goody as you want. One of the very first few games that I felt that really implemented that really well, uh, Kotor obviously being the primer that helped Bioware, you know, get its uh, RPG tropes down, so that way they could uh, give us the great trilogy that is Mass Effect. And it is just overall, in terms of just Star Wars, it is actually one of the best Star Wars stories to go alongside not only the movies, but some of the better uh, game, other games out there, some of the better books out there, and other uh, extended material. So I really feel that KOTOR is one of the, one of the best uh, of all time in terms of just Xbox and Star Wars in general. Yeah, I, uh, I I talked about it. It was it was my Xbox pick on the uh, on the first season, so I've already talked at length about it. But uh, I echo a lot of the um, the sentiments you bring to the table. Um, uh, the fact that it was very much like the precursor to what we got with Mass Effect, um, a great Star Wars story, um, and uh, just one of the like standout original Xbox exclusives in a time where they were really trying to you know make a name for themselves on the market. Um, and they were able to do so with with Halo and and Halo Two, um, but Kotor was uh, out there in a on a uh, on a box that didn't have much in the way of RPGs. Uh, you know, you had like Fable and stuff, but um, this w- and and Morrowind, uh, but that was um, you know one of those things that like I was very glad that I had an Xbox in that uh, generation because I was able to play that game that I would not have been able to, to really tackle otherwise. Um, so anybody else uh, uh, play KOTOR or have uh, have anything they want to add to the KOTOR conversation? It's a good game. Real good game. Really, good game. really enjoy it. Scott? Uh, yeah. what, did you, what alignment and stuff did you guys play when you played through your first time? Oh, I mean, I would have been like a good... Good, good guy, Jedi. <laughs> yeah, I went full, par- you know, full light side, and I tried to for my uh, party. I tried to always make sure I had other saber users as well. Uh, their names escaped me, but I think one guy, his name was Jelani, and I forget. I think Bastila. I think was the other character I always tried to have in my party as much as off- as possible. Uh, yeah, uh, Jelani would have been the cat lady. Yep. Um, who tried to uh, kill you it- the first time you met her? Yeah. Uh, was it? Je- not there was okay, Zalbar. Say, that was the Wookie. Yeah, uh, I'm talking. The, or I'm thinking the uh, the the African American Jedi. Yeah, that's character. who I was thinking of. I may have gotten the names mixed, but yeah. the guy you find on Kashyyyk when you uh, when you can bring him aboard. Yeah, I want to say Jindu, but I'm I'm pretty sure that's just me confusing whatever his real name was with Master Windu from from the movies. To Google. Um, yeah. 
Uh, but I, yeah, I know you're talking about, and, and yeah, that was, I, I, I mostly probably went around with, um, Bastilla and Karth, kind of your mm-hmm. first party members. Um, although like HK 47 is just one of my favorite video game characters just it, uh, ever his, uh, his complete contempt for humanity meat <laughs> uh, or li- living organisms, meat bags. Yeah. Um, was like, it was, it was fun to see with, um, HK 47 and, uh, and, R three maybe or whatever whatever the 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 R two D two version uh, was like them them taking these like iconic images of the Star Wars that we know and love from kind of the movies and and doing a like here's a historical spin on it even the like the Ebon Hawk being you know a, a you know far flung precursor to the Millennium Falcon uh, as your kind of like home base ship uh, was a uh, it was it was like the what we knew enough um but still distant enough from that that it made it fun and enjoyable um and and i very much enjoyed that series uh zyger aaron do you have anything to uh to add on the kotor train i've never played kotor i own it on steam i haven't played it yet it's one of those games that i just like keep putting off because there are too many games out it's one (laughs) And uh, as uh, Cameron, I think, touched on a lot in uh, in season one, um, because it being on Steam um, and and mod support and stuff, there's probably a lot of like good, you know, uh, up res textures and stuff that'll that are keeping that game feeling and looking fresh uh, in in the modern era. Um, so it's probably the the way to play it these days. But um, I hope you check it out because yeah. yeah, it's a really good game. Uh, but I I can also appreciate plenty of games in your steam library that you just never actually get to because <laughs> it's on, it's on sale and it's a thing that yeah i'll buy it for five dollars or whatever because <laughs> yeah. that's a game i've heard so much about and then you just never actually get around to it because backlogs yay um joey you, bindo was the name of the character by the way there you go joey bindo yeah i own the game on xbox have not played it it's one of those games like oh i'll get to it eventually and it just yeah. hasn't happened yet <laughs> Yeah, and it's it is one that like I love that it's backwards compatible, because um, uh, I could I'm sure I could like bust out my disc on it, um, and I think I did not too long ago. Um, uh, yeah, because it would have been probably well no, no I, I think I, I think I just played it again on the original Xbox uh, a few years maybe before. Yeah, it was God, it probably was during the 360 era, because um, I did not have a 360 myself, um, but. Uh, yeah, that's a it's a solid game. Definitely, uh, I, I encourage you guys to check it out. Um, but I will throw it to uh, well, any other original Xbox games that that we want to give some love to. Um, Zyger, I think of you as the Xbox person, and not just because you're now with uh, with MC Fixer at my Xbox and me, but because um, you were the the Xbox person I knew before that. Uh, so, what other Xbox uh, games would you want to give some love to? Uh, there is an SSX game that's super great. I think it's Tricky or was it 3? I don't know. There was one SSX game on the Xbox that was like one of my first Xbox games. That was amazing. Yep. Uh, I mean, yeah, very... both both Tricky and 3, I think, were of that, that era. Yeah. I, I played them on PS2, but yeah. And then the game I originally got an Xbox for, Lego Star Wars. Great game. <laughs> it was my introduction Star to Wars? the Star yeah. Wars story. <laughs> Okay. Well, and, that, I mean, so, because the first one that came out was the prequel trilogy. Yep. Uh, it came out, what, like, a couple weeks before episode three actually hit theaters, I think? Yeah. Um, so, so like, it, I remember looking back on that and thinking, that's weird that, like, they released a tie-in game that would spoil the movie before the movie came out. <laughs> okay. Not admittedly, like, you know how episode three is going to end if you knew episode four existed, so... Um, yeah, but all uh, yeah, the I, I love that that was I also your the game your, first. Yeah, I, that's of course you did. Of course you did, Zyger. <laughs> Are you excited for the Skywalker saga? That's yeah, going to be I all can nine finally of them? figure out what happens in seven, eight, nine. People keep talking there about them. Yeah, because they they only ever released a Lego game four or seven, right? Uh, but another game I was going to pick would be Burnout Three Takedown which is yep. an amazing game and I'm very contemplating on like whether or not I want to veto this <laughs> and and put burnout on the list. Yeah. That's I mean, you you can certainly do that. Um 
and keep the list 100% brand new. I don't know if it'll stay that way with one more round to go, but um, I mean, it, it is certainly an option. Um, before we uh, touch on that, um, Scott or Aaron, any other Xbox games you want to uh, give some love to? Um, I'd like to shout out Fusion Frenzy, which I <laughs> had a lot of fun with. Growing- did you play the f- the actual Fusion Fusion Frenzy, or did you play the demo disc version? The actual that it seems version. Like everybody of, did the actual version of Fusion Frenzy. Okay. Um, oh God. Was that a good Ogata or a bad Ogata? Yeah, it, Fusion Frenzy is one of the best games on the Xbox, and it's also backwards compatible, so people can play it now. The game is on sale for like three dollars. Everyone should play this game. It's so good. It's like a mini game collection. It's great to play with friends. Like get a group of friends together and just play this. This is that's how I did it. Um, it's just Same. a I lot of with my fun. siblings. It's so fun. And uh, shout out to just wanted to give a shout out to it. So no, that's fair. Scott how, or Aaron, how about you? I never owned an Xbox, so okay. I don't. I All don't right. know what games are on the Xbox. That's that's quite fair. Uh, so then I will I will throw it to uh, Scott or Zyger. Both of you have a, a veto that you could utilize uh, if you want to keep this game off the list and keep the Xbox available for round five next week. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna are you gonna like betray Brandon, break his heart? <laughs> I dare you. No, I'm kidding. You can do it if you want to. <laughs> but if you do, I'm just gonna take this opportunity to say, Scott, I saved Diablo too. Just saying. Oh, I also <laughs> saved Diablo too. Yeah, but if you veto, you would be the one that would be contending my pick, though. Yeah, but like Brandon, you gotta look at it like this: we have gone 15 games without a repeat. We can keep the streak going. I like the games I like, man. So I leave the decision up to you. Yeah, but burnout, dude, burnout. Oh, burnout, burnout is really good. But burnout I, is the burnout is the game that I returned for Kotor. I'm pretty sure, but because <laughs> it came it came with my uh, my Xbox bundle. I told the story uh, uh, last season. Uh, I won my original Xbox at my high school graduation, and it came with Morrowind and Burnout. And I was like, I don't play racing games, so I'm gonna t- I'm gonna return Burnout, and uh, and I picked up Kotor. But in terms of Burnout, my connection, my love of Burnout is with Burnout in Paradise. So, fair, fair. I I couldn't back Burnout Three. So if, because I love Kotor, so to back a veto from you, I would need something other than Burnout Three. Like yeah, that that's fair. I respect that. Which, um, I'm not gonna veto Kotor because that is a fantastic game. So if it if it ends up being the only crossover between our seasons, uh, so be it. Uh. Sager, uh, so I leave I'll, it to you. I will live with this. You will live with this one? Yeah. All right. Why did he betray me? <laughs> Good. Good. Then episode four of season two wraps up with our very first uh, game from season one's list that making its appearance on season two. Uh, solid list, everybody. Um, I mean, if, like still 15 games in and we had like brand new games uh, across the board. Um, uh, certainly... Um, it impressed me, um, and it'll be definitely a harder feat to do in future years unless I get a panel full of Scots, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. Just bring it back. So, yeah. So that is going to do it for this episode of That Ultimate Video Game List Show. Uh, thank you, panel, for uh, for joining me. And uh, as a recap, uh, that gives us Mischief Makers for the N64, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 for the Nintendo Switch, uh, Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U, and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, breaking the Nintendo trend this week, as well as breaking our trend of completely new games to the series um, for the original Xbox from Brandon. Uh, so uh, that's going to do it. So uh, just kind of do the, uh, the the plugs and outros and whatnot. So you can follow Scott at SolidSnake120. Scott, anything you want to give some love to? Um. By the time this comes out, a new episode of RPG University will be uh, hap- or will be out. We'll have released yesterday. It's on Dragon Age Inquisition with Kelsey Hansen from Annapurna Interactive, so give that a check out. And if you're listening to this early enough and you're at PAX, stop by the Arachnid Theater today at 4.30 for, uh, for our panel. Yeah. 
Should be should be a good fun time. We'll be uh, will we talk about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic? Um, I certainly put a trope in there that <laughs> that ties to that game, true. Uh, as well as some of the other potential games on our list. So uh, so yeah, come come check that out if you are in Boston uh, and and uh, attending PAX uh, the day that this goes live. If you're if you're listening to us as you're walking around the convention hall, cool. Thanks so much. Uh, swing by Arachnid Theater tonight at four thirty. Uh, you can follow Brandon at GamesGan. Anything you want to shout out, Brandon? Actually, I do. I'm going to buck the, buck the trend of week-to-week shouting out other people because I actually did help out on a piece of content that I did not know when would go live, and it did this past week of time of recording. So by the time everyone's listening to this episode, it will be about a week and a half old. But I sat down with Irrational Passions' own Alex and Brian, and we did our own little fantasy critic draft, and that was a fun little 40 minutes. So I invite everybody to go to the Irrational Passions Presents feed on your podcast service of choice and just take a listen to that uh, and see which one of those three is going to win out the year and we're going to do a quarterly check-in so I'm very excited to sit down with those guys again here in about a couple months time and uh, get an update to see how we're doing very cool I uh yeah I I saw uh I saw that went live and that you joined them this year because last year Alex and Nabashin did it kind of on their own right Mm -hmm. Um, as far as I was they each had one yeah um and so yeah i I like that i remember seeing you kind of following along last year so i like that they they brought you into the the fold on this one um very cool and uh you all watch uh easy allies and and they do it that as well right yeah basically kind of the idea basically what they do is they do one at the beginning of the year they do a check-in at e3 and then they do a recap at the end slash beginning of the next year and they're in year two right now Nice. And I know I saw uh, PS I Love You XOXO is doing a similar thing this year yep. um, over with their PlayStation game. So very cool. Um, maybe maybe we'll have to get in the fantasy draft game here at, uh, at that nerdy site sometime. I highly recommend uh, it. Yeah, seems fun. Uh, you can follow Zyger at Zyger1337. Anything you want to shout out, Zyger? Uh, by the time this goes live, I will have first impressions on my XboxMate.com for both Bleeding Edge and the xbox x cloud beta on ios and probably some other stuff that's i would have written within the week so maxboxme.com check it out very cool and you can follow aaron at aaron underscore mahler anything you want to give a, a plug to aaron yeah uh this goes on on friday so the past monday an episode of uh scootcast came out um it's it's bound to be stupid. We're recording it tonight, so I'm sure it'll be ridiculous. Uh, and then uh, also today, the day you're listening to this, a new episode of RPG and Chill will come out. I guarantee you we're going to talk about my rising uh, issues with Final Fantasy 3. And, uh, 3 as in 3 or 3 as in 6? 3 as in 3. Oh, okay. And my, yeah, uh, okay. my struggle to um, wrap my head around old school uh nes games <laughs> that's that's fair uh that was because that was uh you had the job system in that one right yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah that was a that was a that was a that was a, a diversion from the uh the formula that they'd really been there uh, just there are a uh, lot of games. uh modern conveniences in games now that i did not that i grew up with that i am not used to not yeah. having in older yeah, games that's fair <laughs> Yep. All right. Um, very cool. Check all that out. Uh, you can follow me at Trevor J. Starkey and all of the latest from That Nerdy Site at That Nerdy Site. Uh, and yeah, I will I will uh, kind of echo the plugs of um, we're going to be doing PAX stuff. Um, so support. Uh, go check out uh, everything we're doing at PAX um, at, at our site, at Irrational Passions, at Dual Shockers, kind of all of our friends that are going to be there covering the event this uh, this weekend. Should be a good, fun time. And uh, if you are there, please come check out the uh, Irrational Passions Presents Best and Most Annoying RPG Tropes panel. Uh, that should be a good, fun time. we got a great group of people there. Um, very much looking forward to it. Uh, please remember to like, rate, subscribe, review, follow us everywhere you can. Uh, and if you are able to support us over at Patreon, patreon.com slash site, we would certainly appreciate it. 
We will be back next week. Uh, for round number five, uh, wrapping up our top 20 games list. So uh, we're going to kick off with Aaron uh, gets the first pick again next week. So uh, check us out there. And then if anybody does get a veto, we're just going to add on whatever games to get up to 20 at the end of next week's episode. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Thank you, as always, for joining us. Stay nerdy and be good to each other.